Hertfordshire Police could be implementing as part of a £637,000 investment unique codes that could be used to confirm Hertfordshire Police officers' identities. They say that concerned residents who are questioned or approached by police officers in Hertfordshire may soon be able to check their identity by asking for a unique number to be texted to their mobile phone. And I can already see a problem with this and I've only gone through two paragraphs. This is where it really shows that police are completely cut off from real life. Hertfordshire Police are considering the system in the wake of the Sarah Everard murder as part of proposals drawn up by David Lloyd, the Police and Crime Commissioner, and could be just one of a number of new technologies said to be trialled by the force. The proposal would see anyone approached by the police asking for officer authentication by contacting the police and giving the officer's collar number. Then the force would send a code to both the member of the public's phone and the police constable's phone with matching codes confirming the plod's identity. David Lloyd says he hopes the use of the technology could provide some reassurance that a police officer is bona fide. He said, one of the roles I have is about underlining police legitimacy and some members of the public are more concerned about police legitimacy than they were. Some, in that incident, of being arrested or whatever, may feel that they want to be certain that they are being arrested by a police officer or being spoken to by a police officer. This gives them a way of doing that. I would underline, we have not had an incident in Hertfordshire that I'm aware of. Oh yeah, got to get that disclaimer in there to cover your ass. Where someone has purported to be a police officer, or indeed a police officer has inappropriately purported to be arresting someone when they weren't, in the manner of what happened to Sarah Everard. Whilst I underline that there, is, there isn't a risk in Hertfordshire, I think this will reassure people there is another way of being certain about it. Because clearly what happened to Sarah Everard still makes all of us both sad and annoyed, and probably no part of the population are sadder or more annoyed than police officers, because it really wasn't what police officers sign up for the job for. Well, that's debatable. But going back to what you just said, whilst I underline that there isn't a risk in Hertfordshire, David, there is a risk in every police force, you utter cretin. I mean, I bet Cressida Dick said the same about the Met until it happened. So making such bold statements is never a good idea. But let's get back to the bigger picture here. You expect the public to get their phone out, text a number, wait for a response, albeit I'm sure it will be relatively quick, and then ask a constable to verify the number on their phone with the number on yours. Okay, can anyone else see where this is doomed to fail before it even begins? First of all, Police don't allow you to get on your mobile phone when they stop you. It must be something they're taught in training to prevent people from trying to call or text accomplices. And I've seen incidents where police have assaulted members of the public for trying to do so. Second of all, if another Wayne cousin appears, <laughs> if, when another Wayne cousin appears, do you think he's going to allow you to text a number while he is simply waiting to assault and murder you? Don't be an idiot, David. Police do not like to be questioned, and that will never change. When they are all puffed up because they see someone to pick on, they aren't going to simply let you talk to their to get their identity in order to verify them. Even now when police ask for collar numbers, when no crime has been committed, they get all shirty, fail to tell you their number, instead opting for the it's on my shoulder, can't you read? And I don't need to tell you my name. What is genuinely going to help prevent the same thing or similar happen again is at least yearly psychological evaluations on every police constable, a proper psych evaluation on application to join the force, random device checks of police staff, getting police back to going out in pairs and not letting police take their warrant cards home with them. I mean, those options are a good starting point. You know, not creating a scenario whereby the member of the public has to stand around with someone who could possibly be a deranged psychopath in uniform. If these problems are dealt with at the root, then you wouldn't have to create this type of procedure for people to use. Simply implementing this worries me, makes me think that you yourself believe the police on the streets could do the same again. Whereby if you take action at the source, then the members of the public would be less at risk. In my opinion, that is. Further details about the proposals to increase the use of technology are expected to be included in the Commissioner's Police and Crime Plan when it is published later this month. 
and the proposals will be considered by the next meeting of the Hertfordshire Police and Crime Panel on March the 17th. I'd suggest this is a very bad idea, not least because it's just another way for them to get your information out of you and put you on their system. But as I've said, if somebody is determined to harm you, they're going to do it regardless. And they're not going to give you time to text any no, any phone number. So I suggest you get down to that meeting if you live in that area and show your opposition. Big thank you to channel supporters, especially these guys. Your support is truly appreciated. Don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials.